They also talk about the world-class doctors in Cuba, yet the citizens receive third world health. And I can remember night after night with my family stuffing envelopes, greeting cards with <sighs> medicines and Kool-Aid just so they could have calories. And that's what I remember. And that was more from ABC News journalist Tom Yamas reacting to Fidel Castro's death. The list of acts of political... Don't tell, don't tell that to uh, Justin Trudeau <sighs> or the somewhat Definitely ambivalent not. Would, Barack Obama. It would get in the way of his narrative. Yeah. Um, here are the acts of revenge and atrocities Fidel Castro is known for. The Cuba Archive Project has sought to log the circumstances of death of some 10,000 people since 1952. But the real death toll is estimated to be far more grim. Tens of thousands perished trying to escape his rule. The stories are heartbreaking. Children slain by firing squad, blood extractions, and in one instant, a pregnant woman kicked in the stomach and left to die. In the early days, Fidel Castro's army crushed revolts like the Escambray Mountains and Bay of Pigs, where over 5,000 are believed to have been killed. And the New York Times reports, quote, more than 500 Batista-era officials were brought before court-martial and special tribunals, summarily convicted and shot to death. The grainy black and white images of the executions broadcast on American television horrified viewers. Castro had close former lieutenants arrested and imprisoned for decades, like Uber Matos, who he was beaten, staged multiple hunger strikes, one of which spanned 165 days and endured years in solitary confinement in a windowless cell, sometimes listening to other inmates being tortured or executed. Matos told a magazine after being freed and arriving in America, I differed from Fidel Castro because of the original objective of our revolution was freedom or death. Once Castro had power, he began to kill freedom. Joining us from Havana, Cuba, NBC News Chief Foreign Affairs Correspondent and host of Andrea Mitchell Reports, Andrea Mitchell, and in Miami, MSNBC Correspondent Mariana Atencio. Andrea, let's start with you. You've interviewed Fidel Castro a number of times over the years. What's the outlook there this morning? Well, it is a somber Havana and Cuba. People here are, for the first time today, going to line up here at Revolution Square, the first of a week-long public ceremonies. Uh, his remains, he was cremated over the weekend. Fidel Castro's remains will be carried more than 500 miles to Santiago de Cuba, where there has been a mausoleum built. That was uh, near his birthplace, the family birthplace. That is where the revolution started. As you can imagine, mixed reactions. Uh, there is a lot more support here among the older generation of Cubans, the people who remember the revolution, remember their leader. He is celebrated here, frankly, for health services, for education, for things that, uh, that I witnessed personally over the years. I first came here in 1999 during the controversy over Alejandro Gonzalez. I came here to cover the fierce anti-U.S. protests and over the years had a number of argumentative uh, long evenings and interviews with Fidel Castro, often starting at midnight or later going through the, through the early hours of the morning. That said, when in 2003 they started cracking down and then a number of years later arresting hundreds of dissidents, those interviews ended. Of course, I interviewed the leader of one of the leading dissident movements yesterday, Berta Soler. She was in her home and she had issued a statement to the media saying that they were not going to march for the first time in 13 years on Sunday after church because uh, they were showing respect to the period of mourning that had been declared, nine days of mourning that was declared over the weekend. When I went to her home, however, and interviewed her, and she was surrounded by some of the fellow ladies in white uh, who had been demonstrating against the imprisonment of human rights activists here, uh, she told me that it was because also they'd been warned by state security not to leave their homes for fear, they said, of being arrested. So there is a mixed legacy here. And now the question is, what's going to happen next? President Obama has made the opening to Havana to Raul Castro a centerpiece of his foreign policy legacy. Donald Trump's aides over the weekend sending mixed signals over how much he will roll back. He's taken a very hard line in contrast to what he had said at the beginning of the campaign. Uh, but more recently, a very hard line, but now mixed signals as to whether there is some flexibility on rolling back these economic changes. 
Joe and Nika. All right. And Andrea Mitchell, live in Cuba. Thank you. Let's go now to Mariana, who is one, in one of Miami's Cuban neighborhoods where protesters and celebrations have been taking place since word of Castro's death. Mariana, what are people telling you this morning? Mika, many Cuban Americans here at Versailles Cafe, the political epicenter of this community in Miami, telling me this morning they cannot believe some of the world reaction from figures like Justin Trudeau and Jill Stein about Fidel Castro, some of the reactions you were talking about just earlier in the show. But they tell me they are especially hurt and ashamed, one even used the word humiliated, by President Obama's statement regarding Fidel Castro, the president calling Castro a singular figure who had enormous impact, but didn't really using uh, the word uh, dictator. Now, on the other hand, many here, the Bay of Pigs veterans, uh, the women in white, uh, they are, you know, praising and thanking Donald Trump for his statement, the president-elect calling Castro a brutal dictator who oppressed his own people. And remember, guys, more than half of Cuban Americans supported Donald Trump in the election, and they are now looking to him to see what will happen with U.S.-Cuba policy, uh, the normalizing of relations under President Obama. That happened via executive action. That could be rolled back on day one on a Trump administration. But on the other hand, the commercial deals, the hotels, the Airbnb, the airlines, those are already underway. So many people this morning questioning how Trump will reconcile his political and his business persona. And guys, at 7.30 today, just while we were having this conversation, probably mm. the first regular scheduled commercial flight Miami to Havana operated by American Airlines was scheduled to take off it is the first of four flights offered daily and just in time for a comandante's funeral uh, MSNBC's Mariana Atencio in Miami thank you very much for that report let's bring in now Republican Congresswoman Ileana Ross Layton in Florida she's a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee and was born in Havana Cuba and at the age of eight she and her family were forced to flee from the regime of Fidel Castro. Tell me what your thoughts are this morning and also your reaction to the very different uh, statements put out by world leaders. Well, thank you so much. Both of you have really uh, laid out uh, what a difference it, it, it has been uh, to have uh, world leaders react to who, uh, the death of a, a tyrant, a dictator, a thug, a murderer, a sadistic killer. That is what. Uh, the people in my congressional district, I'm so humbled to represent victims of uh, Castro's oppression. Uh, it's a majority minority district, uh, meaning we are we are just so full of uh, of so many victims. Either they're victims of firing squads or they're uh, uh, the family members of political prisoners, and all of them are shocked with the with the world leaders' reactions. Trudeau talking about what a great orator Fidel Castro was. Good God, this is a man who murdered people and to to his very last breath. Uh, was was still an enemy of the United States, and his brother uh, is just the same. Uh, you know, it's uh, like like the who's saying, meet meet the new boss, same as the old boss. What will really change from uh, Fidel Castro to Raul Castro? Raul has already been entrenched in power for a number of years. That transition has right. taken place. It had been it, Fidel Castro's death would have had more of an impact had he been in power at the time. Right. But he was able to pass off that baton. So let, but this is a very hurt community. Let me ask you then: Isn't the sort of symbolic um, nature of this moment of the death of Castro perhaps an opportunity for world leaders to urge change in Cuba? And was You're that so a right. missed opportunity? It is a missed opportunity so far. We have heard the Mexican president also call uh, Fidel Castro a, a friend. Uh, we have heard from very few world leaders uh, to Why? say Why that, do you that think he, that Justin Trudeau, but especially President Obama, yes. would be sort of lukewarm? What's uh, help me understand why the opportunity wouldn't be taken in su such an obvious situation? Is there something I'm missing? 
Well, I think for President Obama, he's got a lot of personal uh, legacy invested in this. He wants to make his Cuba uh, concessions, sweetheart deals to Raul Castro and Fidel Castro a winning legacy. So he wants to mm. lead the charge for others. And that's why he was quick to point to uh, send that statement out, uh, saying nothing about the victims, saying nothing about uh, uh, about his record, Fidel Castro's record of uh, being a sadistic leader, not allowing human rights, no democracy. And, and all, the, all the leaders talk about how he's outlasted so many presidents in the United States. Well, of course you can. When you don't have elections, when you rule with an iron fist, uh, you can survive anything. Uh, just ask the, ask the Kim dynasty in North Korea. Right. It's amazing. It, it, it makes us sick to see the world leaders' reactions. I hope that President Obama does not send himself or a delegation uh, to this tyrant's funeral. Congresswoman Eliana ross Layton, thank you so thank much you, for your sentiments this morning. Coming up... Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.